Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Averly reporting from Dallas County, and I'm here with Jessica Vega. She was just telling me how much she uh, invested in the stock market, and she's like super cool now, and she thinks she's better than everyone. Uh, she said she kept on telling me Wall you, Street sir. is mine. You, Wall Street sir. is mine. That's all she was saying all the entire time before we started recording. Is that right? I know nothing about the stock market at all. <laughs> she kept on saying, "I'm the queen of Wall Street. I know everything." Mm. <laughs> Do not believe anything he says. He's sits on a throne of lies. Throne of that's pretty much what Wall Street is. Oh, it's a hot take. Anyway, think about it. If it is, then huh? it is. Yeah, because that was that whole thing that happened with Robin Hood. Remember, and that, when the yeah. ga- GameStop. Yeah, they're still like investigating that um, whole GameStop thing. Mm. Like it's it's still an open kind of thing. Yeah. Have I'm, you seen the stocks for that? It's like, it, it's insane. I don't know, man. I do Acorn. They do the stocks for me. They went from like six dollars a stock to two hundred and something a stock overnight. Wow, people are getting money. All yeah. right. So, what are we talking about today? Uh, you tell us. You're gonna tell the story today. Oh my goodness. Do it. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about XXS Tentacion. What do you know about XXS Tentacion? I don't really know a whole lot about him. Um, I thought I knew uh, s- s- stuff, but I don't know anything, to be honest. All I know is that he was a young person that was murdered, um, and he was also a musician. Yeah. My son um, does or did like him. I don't know what happened. He stopped liking him, and I don't know. I don't know why. I think it's going to have to be – I think it has to do with something – that he learned about him, but I'm not sure. All I know is that I didn't hear about him at all until after he passed away because my son started hearing his music and and then, yeah, and then I didn't really hear about him anymore, but that was that. Yeah, man, like, let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, it. uh Jose Dwayne Ricardo Onfroy, known professionally as Tentacion. And commonly referred to simply as X. And he was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. Uh, <clears throat> he uh, gained a cult following among his young fan base during his short career with his depression, alienation, theme music. Critics and fans often credit him for his musical versatility. <clears throat> With his music exploring emo, trap, lo-fi, indie rock, new metal, hip-hop, R&B, rock, and rock punk. And he is considered a leading figure in the emo rap and SoundCloud rap genres, which has garnered mainstream uh, attention during the mid to late 2010s. So that's a bit of an overview of what of who uh, XXS Tentacion is. And for the remainder of this podcast, I will not I will refer to X uh, simply as Onfroy. Uh, okay, does that sound good? Onfroy? Onfroy. Is that his, like, name name? Yeah, that's his legal name. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're going to get into, we're mostly going to focus on the stuff that he did. Now, as disclaimer, uh, the things that he did, he he did as a teenager. And he probably didn't really know better. And I, based on what I've, what I've seen, he seemed to try to near the end like as he was growing up try to rectify that and try to turn a new leaf uh so i don't believe in basically judging this person over the actions he did as a as an adolescent teen what do you think i agree yeah how do you agree huh it just sucks because if that's the case i'm pretty sure that he did some pretty messed up things to some people if this is how it ended up Mm. so let's see so in late 2012 onfroy was arrested for possession of 21 grams of marijuana a felony in florida law now he was sentenced to one month of juvenile detention and six months at behavioral correctional facility shortly after his release he was arrested again for breaking into a house to steal a laptop in order to create music. What do you think about that one? I mean, weed, it's not that big of a thing. It's not legal in Florida, but it's legal in most of America. Right. Um, it's not exactly the biggest thing. 
and I really wish they would just legalize it already. Mm. And then it was also the breaking into the house to steal a laptop because he wanted to create music. Uh, what do you think about that? I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know. You can't blame it on bad parenting. I, I don't know. I he wanted to create music and he wanted to make music that bad, but at the same time, it's like, come on, man. Why don't you just buy more money? Either that or get a job or find ways to make money if you can't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't go steal from other people. That's terrible. Mm hmm. So, like, in 2014, Onfroy was sent to a youth detention center for a year on gun, on gun possession charges. According to Onfroy, during his time in detention, the district attorney was atten was attempting to try him as an adult for gun possession which would have had a sentence to five to ten years in prison. Onfroy's narrative of this time in youth detention has been disputed by sources interviewed by a 2020 biography. He may have served one month's det uh, detention as part of a wider sentence or less than one year, and his charges cannot be contributed by public files as he was a juvenile. So let's move on to his, what happened next. Uh, Dylan Turner, a New Jersey native studying at Full Sail University, which is hey, where hey, I hey. went. Huh? Yeah, I know. I yeah. Say. yeah, it's where I went. Uh, he managed XXS Tentacion's uh, and Ski Mask in 2016. Due to Onfroy's inexperience in music and Turner's inexperience in management, they agreed that Turner would be paid only in the proceeds from the song look at me when this amount grew rapidly an angry onfroy broke into turner's apartment stole his laptop and stabbed his abdomen turner required emergency surgery and suffered life-changing injuries while the loss of his work on his laptop ended his career so he pledged to drop the charges against onfroy if his computer could be returned and stuck to his word despite all its files being deleted. Oh, that's so fucked up. Wow, I'm Turner, sorry. you're 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 a bigger man than me. Cause that's that right there is a lot. If you end somebody's career, pretty much, that can that can really like take a toll on somebody mm. and make them do things that they normally wouldn't do. And he stabbed him. Yeah, he did. Also, we never hear... Turner's done. That's it for Turner. We, we're not going to hear from him again, by the way. <laughs> um, so in July 14, 2016, days after being bailed for stabbing Dylan Turner, Onfroy was arrested and charged with robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, and home invasion, committed in November 2015. According to the arrest report, Onfroy entered the home of Shay Thomas with three other people, armed with a firearm. After pistol whipping Thomas three times, Onfroy escaped the home with an iPad, an iPhone, and a PlayStation Portable and twenty bucks. What are you what are you looking back there for, dude? I'm looking at my screen and I'm like, what is that back there? There's nothing back there. Oh, it's just it's a blanket on a tray. Oh. It was like I thought some of the toys were knocked over. I was like, what the hell is that? Okay. So, on, Onfroy was arrested in Orlando originally until he was transferred to Orange County. Uh, his uh, constant relocations were due to an eventually successful plan by prosecutors to find a jurisdiction that would charge him as an adult for a crime committed as a juvenile. And he was paroled on September 2016. So, yeah. So, after posting a bail of $10,000 in early October that same year, while awaiting trial, Onfroy was arrested again later that month on charges of false imprisonment, witness tampering, and aggravated battery of a pregnant victim. On March 26, 2017, Onfroy was released from jail on bail while facing charges of robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. His trial for aggravated battery of a pregnant victim was originally going to take place on May 2017 and was pushed back several times and was set to take place on October 5th, 2017. 
On September 8, 2017, Pitchfork leaked the testimony of the victim on Omfroy's aggravated battery case, and the trial was then delayed again. With the date of December 11, 2017 announced, controversy arose once again following Onfroy's choice to donate $100,000 to domestic violence prevention programs, and then further when Onfroy announced an event to support rape victims, though it was later canceled due to vandalism. What do you What do you think about that? Well, that just sucks. That's it. That's all you have to say. That's all I have to say. Can you, but you can tell that he was trying to, I guess, trying to atone for his sins, as they say. Yeah, it just sucks because his sins were pretty fucked up, you know. Mm. And it's not like he just did like little things. Like I don't even know what a little thing would be, but not serious things. He actually served time for all these things that he did. Hmm. Anyways. Do <laughs> you want to hear about more things he did? Sure. Okay, so an on Okay. So Onfroy's trial was delayed again after an affidavit was filed by Onfroy's ex girlfriend, the alleged victim in the case, asking asking for the charges to be completely dropped. She also declined to testify in court. This was the pregnant victim mm -hmm. that he assaulted. Mm-hmm. So, in reaction, the prosecution moved to split the case into two, with witness tampering charges filed against Onfroy and a new trial date announced for December 15th, 2017. On December 10th, 2017, Onfroy posted a message to Instagram writing, Court date is on the 15th, 9 a.m. Here's my court information. If I'm taken into custody, I want to tell everyone I've let down. I apologize. I tried my best. I really did. He then released the information of the court hearing. What do you say about that? I don't know. Kind of weird. What? How is that weird? Putting it all out there. Did he like post it? Was it like a Twitter? Or Instagram? It was on Instagram. Mm. He was trying to say that he's sorry. Okay. I know. Do but you do you forgive him? It's kind of hard to forgive all that, but. You have to you have to work at it for a while. You can't just be forgiven right away. Like you can be forgiven, but you have to show it. You have to prove it. But over a, a good period of time, not just like a year or less, in my opinion, because he did a lot. He did a lot of bad things. Mm. So like Onfroy posted not guilty on December fourteenth, twenty seventeen. Oh, he pleaded not guilty. And was taken into pre-trial uh, pre custody after a motion was filed by the prosecution on the grounds of Onfroy having violated his bond. He was held without bail. So it was confirmed on December 20th, 2017 that Onfroy was being released on house arrest. Onfroy was released from house arrest on March 21st, 2018. In 2019, documents of audio phone calls that Onfroy made to his mother from jail were released in which was it was suggested that Onfroy's ex-girlfriend may have never been pregnant in the first place. Now that's a shock. Mm. Probably wanted to go beat her. Probably wanted to go beat her. What are you talking <laughs> about, dude? After you found that out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so shortly after his his release, it's not funny. It's not fun I wasn't laughing. You were the one who was laughing. So <laughs> Shortly after being released from house arrest, a Snapchat video surfaced of Onfroy hitting a woman in 2013 when he was 15. Onfroy's attorneys claimed the video, which features a caption written by the woman that sardonically reads, I hate this, and then it says the N-word, uh, along with Onfroy dancing to some music before striking the girl, was obviously in jest. Onfoy claimed afterwards that he was afraid he was going to be financially extorted by the woman and that members of her family had already called him requesting money. The woman showing, shown with Onfroy in the video came forward several days later saying that she was terrified for her life. However, according to TMZ, Onfroy intended to sue the woman for fraud and defamation after her family allegedly demanded a large sum of money in exchange for her silence. 
The woman later released a statement saying that the version of events described by Onfroy was correct and that she hoped that people see the video in the playful context in which it was recorded and nothing more. His domestic violence charges, which he was waiting trial for, were dropped following his death. So, what do you think? It just sucks. It just sucks all around. So I gotta say. I don't know about with this lady though. So, yeah. so she. So, sum it up. What she? What is she saying? Like this? This was a joke or something? Yeah, it was pretty much a joke. It was a joke. The prosecution took that recording, tried to use it as evidence in the case against him, uh, and. The person who was in the video said, no, don't do that. It was it was a joke. But then her family cu- kept calling, uh, calling uh, on Freud and saying, like, hey, yeah, give me money. money. Yeah. Trying to, like, blackmail him. Mm-hmm. That's another thing with fame, you know? Like, you don't know who to trust. You don't know who's your friend. You don't know anything. So that's why a lot of famous people, they get depressed because... They don't know who they can talk to. They don't know who is their people because anyone and everybody, anyone can be bought, depending. Mm. And it sucks. Yeah. So let's see. On October 23rd, 2018, Pitchfork released secretly recorded audio of an 18-year-old Onfroy ask, take, talking with acquaintances around the time of his uh, October 8th, 2016 arrest. Uh, Pitchfork claimed that in the recording, he had allegedly confessed to domestic violence. Is that funny to you? Domestic violence? Is that funny? Laughing at you and your nasty birds. <laughs> and had described an incident in which he stabbed nine people. So the tape was considered a confession by the prosecution and defense. An extended version of the audio later released included moments after when Onfroy clari- clarified in regards to his ex-girlfriend, I didn't touch her, I forgave her. One especially fraught conversation about Onfroy's ex-girlfriend took place on one on the afternoon of, of October 26th, 2016, when he told a woman, I already got what I wanted, I already batched her face, her face on the internet, bruh. I done made her look bad on the internet. Bra. Oh, bro. So later that day, an audio clip from the police posted on Instagram of Onfroy stating that she bashed her face without the hurry con- con- clarification. So, yeah. And that's pretty much the extent of all the stuff that he personally did. That's a lot of sh- fucked up shit. I'm sorry, but it, that's bad. And And just... Saying sorry, I'm sorry, but saying sorry is not going to delete all that stuff from people's brains. Really? The people that it impacted, the people that it hurt, the people that, um, I don't know. That was a lot. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was 15. He was 16. But damn, he was bad. He was a bad, yeah. (laughs) He basically, okay, like uh, like a recap. Did he not have any parents or anything? Like. I don't know. It sounded like he just came from a really bad place and just not good guardians, not good people looking out for him. It just sounds like he was just raised in a really messed up spot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, from the way it sounds, like, he had absolutely no no like consequences for anything he did and even even if he was locked up it didn't really seem to matter because he still came out and did more dumb stuff but then he got older and tried to change tried to tried to fix what he did but mm. i mean to be to be fair he wasn't given a lot of time because his life was ended pretty abruptly yeah you're right I'm guessing somebody took out their revenge on him for something he did. One of these things that mm-hmm. he did. I don't know. Yeah. So let's get into like that whole thing about his murder. 
Um, so on June 18th, Onfroy went to the Bank of America to withdraw money before heading to Riva Motorsports, an upscale seller of motorcycles and boats in Deerfield Beach, Florida. After withdrawing money from the bank, he was followed by a dark-colored Dodge Journey SUV, allegedly containing Dedrick Williams, Robert Allen, Michael Boatwright, and Trayvon Newsom. At 3.30 p.m., Onfroy arrived at Riva Motorsports and entered with his uncle. Accused accomplices Robert Allen and Dedrick Williams followed Onfroy inside the store. The two, Williams and Allen, walked past Onfroy as he was browsing motorcycles. They are recorded coming into Riva and buying two black masks. A half hour later, Onfroy left the dealership, entered his black BMW i8, and began to drive away from the dealership. If you want to know what a BMW i8 looks like, um, it looks like, let me show you. Looks like that. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. So he was balling. So that's what the dude was driving? That's what, yeah, that's what Onfroy was driving. Okay. So, uh, so he was driving his BMW i8 and began to drive away from the dealership. The SUV drove in front of Onfroy's car, blocking him in, while Newsom and Boatwright exited the vehicle and demanded property from Onfroy. A brief struggle ensued, which resulted in Onfroy being shot multiple times in the neck by Boatwright. Witnesses told police Newsom and Boatwright took a Louis Vuitton bag from Onfroy's vehicle and then ran to, to the Black Dodge. The shooting occurred in east of the city of Parkland, where Onfroy was living at the time. The Broward County Fire Department rushed him to a nearby Broward Health North. Onfroy was initially reported to be in critical condition following the shooting, but the Broward County Sheriff's Office later confirmed his death. So what do you think about that? Well, I mean... So you think that... Hmm, I don't know. I wonder... I wonder if it was somebody from his past and they just took his stuff because to make it look like a robbery... I don't know. It's terrible, though. Mm -hmm. He was super young. Yeah. But we know one thing for sure. This was a robbery gone wrong. Was it? Really? Well, they wanted his, they said, hey, give me your stuff. And on, on face value, it was a robbery. Okay, but to be shot that many times at point blank range doesn't sound like a robbery. It sounds like, let's make it look like a robbery and take his stuff. Okay. But I mean, they were fighting, though, so... They were, Maybe oh, in the he, he was no, he didn't want to give it to them. Mm -hmm. So shortly following the announcement of Onfroy's death, Broward County Sheriff's Office offered three thousand dollar bounty for any information leading to the arrest of any suspects. Originally, many fans of Onfroy's numerous internet users uh, and local residents suspend, suspected local Florida rappers Soldier Kid and Soldier Jojo to be the kids of Onfroy due to several suspicious Instagrams posts made by the pair with specific details that collaborated with witness reports. But these accusations were later dropped when Didrick Williams and Michael Boatwright, the alleged shooter, were arrested. On June 20th, 2018, the Broward County Sheriff's Office arrested 22-year-old Didrick Devonshay Williams in connection with Onfroy's murder. Williams was driving in his silver 2004 Honda before a traffic stop occurred. occurred. Williams was detained. Oh, Williams was detained in the car space that followed. Oh, let me close this. In the car space that followed, Williams was identified by clothing he wore on June twenty, June eighteenth, which included orange sandals and a white tank top. The police matched images from security footage to recent photos from Williams' Instagram feed, which featured the same or similar bright orange sandals 
He was also identified by employees who saw him enter Riva Motorsports to buy a neoprene mask. After William's arrest, two more active warrants were issued. Um, yep. And on June 27th, 22 year old Robert Allen was named a person of interest in the case and was later arrested in July 26th. On July 5th, 22 year old Michael Boatwright uh, was also arrested by the Broward County Sheriff's Office. Originally, he was arrested on a drug related charges, but on July 10th, a warrant was put out for him related to the death of Onfroy. Police believe Boatwright was one of the was the one who fatally shot Onfroy, and the three men were later indicted by a grand jury alongside a fourth for Onfroy's death. On August seventh, twenty year old twenty Travin Newsom was Trayvon Newsom was arrested for his involvement in the murder. Newsom and Boatwright are both the alleged shooters, so they got him. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> You don't seem like very happy. No, I mean, I'm glad there's not some crazy ass out there just robbing people and shooting them because they don't want to give them their stuff. It doesn't seem like you're shedding many tears for, for Onfroy, though. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the kid, man. I don't know. He did some messed up things. So he deserves to die? No. <laughs> you know, hey, nobody... Mm, I don't know about nobody, but like... I don't know. So we're sure that it's the guy. We're sure that these are the people that did it and that it was just a robbery gone wrong. Yes. Well, ab- about the robbery gone wrong, I, I'm not sure, but it, it, it was these, these guys. Okay. All right. I guess. I guess. <laughs> what do you because want? it could have easily been one of his past encounters that made it look like that. Oh, so so you're disappointed that it know. wasn't something yeah, more? I'm disappointed that it wasn't one of his past. But, I mean... Shit, that sucks, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like, would say that it stinks like to be like, killed. Like, yeah. I'm, going up the, I'm going up the right path now. I'm doing what I gotta do. I'm, I'm paying my dues. I'm saying sorry to everybody. I'm trying to turn a new leaf. And then some random comes and just takes him out. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Yeah, I know. So, Diedrich was charged with first-degree murder, probation violation, and was denied bail. And on June 25th, he pled not guilty. Uh, Williams was has been arrested multiple times prior, and on July 10th, Michael Boatwright was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. According to the Broward County Sheriff's Office, Boatwright... Uh, was initially arrested on rela- unrelated drug charges on July 5th before he was formally charged with Onfroy's murder July 10th. On July 25th, a third subject, Robert Allen, who was 22, was taken into custody after U.S. Marshals found him at his sister's house in rural Georgia. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> he was booked in Dodge County, Georgia, and was being held without bond on a warrant on Broward County Sheriff's Office. On August 7th, in Broward County Sheriff's Office announced on Twitter that Trayvon Newsom, who was 20, was taken into custody shortly after, shortly before 5 p.m. and had been booked on charges of first-degree murder and robbery with a deadly weapon. Jose Onfroy's father, Dwayne Onfroy, has stated that he wants the death penalty for the suspected shooters and life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the suspected accomplices. Since the sub- suspects were being charged in Florida, if convicted of first-degree murder, they would be eligible for capital punishment. So, yeah. What? Well, yeah, I mean... I get it that his dad wants that. This is the first time we mentioned his father, by the way. Yeah. So, uh... Following the announcement of Onfroy's murder, a makeshift memorial was quickly created by fans and local residences uh, consisting of lyrics from the artist and words of remembrance written in shock. Stretching up to 100 yards, the owner of Riva Motorsports, where Onfroy was killed, held a vigil on June 18, 2018. Hundreds gathered during the, during the vigil and Broward County Sheriffs were forced to close the street. Shortly after, a walk commenced between Onfroy's fans. 
On for his fan house in Parkland, which was being built at the time, was also memorialized by fans. On for his team issued a statement saying a proper memorial service would be arranged soon. Internet personality Adam, Adam Grand Mason, known professionally as Adam Twenty Two, the creator of podcast No Jumper, for which Onfroy was had had his first professional interview held a memorial a day after Onfroy's death in front of his BMX retail store on some shiz. What's so fun? What? So... That's what it's called? Yeah. The uh, BMX store. Yeah. So, on Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles, a crowd of 34 people... Of 34 people... Uh, not 34. 354 people. The crowd eventually grew over 1,000 and police and riot gear eventually appeared with police en route to disperse the crowd according to reports rubber bullets were shot and tear gas were used to disperse the crowd so an open huh (laughs) an open casket surface for on took police at bb and t center in sunrise florida on june 27th where fans were allowed to pay their respects his private funeral took place a day later where rappers Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Yachty, Denzel Curry, and singer Erica Badu were among the attendees. He was all he was laid to rest in a gray mausoleum at the gardens of Boca Raton Memorial Park on June nineteenth, the day after Onfroy's death. Billboard reported that Taylor Swift's Spotify single day streaming record for Look What You Made Me Do was broken by Onfroy's track. Saudi, sad. I mean, oh no, mm-hmm. I lost the I lost the video because my storage space is ran out. Oh well, well, I guess we'll just do it audio only for now, for the rest. Um, da 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 da. What was I doing? Oh yeah, was it was broken by On Force Track Sad with over ten point four million streams compared to Swift's ten point one million streams. So this was followed by a 16-fold sales increase across all streaming and download platforms, including a 7,000-fold sales increase in CDs on Amazon. On for his album, Question Mark, was expected to return to the top five the week of, of his death following his murder, ultimately reaching number three with 90,000 album-equivalent units sold up to 19,000 the last week. In the week following his murder, Onfroy's highest charting single, Sad, went from uh, 52nd to 1st on the Billboard Hot 100, making him the artist to top the Hot 100 posthumously in a lead role since Notorious B.I.G. with Mo' Money, Mo' Problems in 1997. In other words, like, he became more famous when he died. Yeah, I mean, sometimes... Sometimes you become worth more when you're dead than alive. Yeah. Like, um, I want to say Aaliyah and maybe even Selena. I don't know. Michael Jackson definitely. Well, he was really, really, really famous when he was alive. But yeah, after he... But a lot of the whole, a lot of the allegations kind of put a damper on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's like it all just kind of faded out of people's minds when he passed away. Mm-hmm. And then back again with the documentaries and stuff. Oh, those documentaries are hard to watch. So, okay. So on June 28th, his management team posthumously released the music video for Sad, which received over 123 million views, whilst the audio has over 1.6 billion listens on Spotify, thus ending ending the story of XXS to Tessian. It's crazy. May he rest in peace. Yeah. Man, dude. So, yeah. Apparently he did so much stupid shit. I mean, but I, you know, I guess he saw the error in his ways. He was a young dude. He was really young. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, as he got older, he finally, like, was able to differentiate between right and wrong. Uh, but unfortunately, as he was still trying to atone for them, he was, it was cut short and he didn't have enough time. It's it's just weird to me, like, this, the whole story, like you said, we only heard about his dad, like, once, like, one little blip of a, a parental unit, <laughs> mm. but 
uh, aside from that, there was nothing really on like his upbringing and like what could have maybe have led to this, to his insane behaviors. I don't know. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did skip a lot of that, but. <laughs> I mean, he did, let me see, he stole stuff, he broke and entered things. He stabbed, like, a lot of people. At least <gasps> one person. Who mm-hmm. freaking just goes around stabbing people just because they piss them off or they're in their way or they're, I don't know. You looked at me funny, I'm going to stab you. Like, really? Like, who does that? Somebody that doesn't care. Somebody that has no consequences or doesn't care about the consequences. Mm, I mean... Also, there's also this other side that maybe he was playing up the things that he did. Maybe, maybe like he was. Like maybe he was just saying those things. Maybe he was just saying those things to look tough in in the rap him. game, huh? <laughs> he was in jail. Yeah, but saying that he stabbed he he himself said he stabbed nine people. Mm-hmm. It was it, like he said that himself. He wasn't convicted for stabbing nine people. Yeah, they the prosecution just took that as like evidence for something else, um, and also he uh, allegedly beat his girlfriend, uh, which then again she did say that she was going to drop the charges and all that that stuff. Uh, so like, do you do you forgive him? Do you forgive the guy? No, you don't. It's, it's hard to forgive somebody that beats their pregnant, maybe not pregnant girlfriend. I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time believing people that can easily beat up their significant other um, can change that, mm-hmm. that character trait. Now, I don't know about the other kind of violence, but he's got a, a history of being a violent person. I don't know if you could just change that and turn that off maybe you can suppress it for a long time but i don't know uh, so you're so you're of the mindset of of a, le- a, a leopard doesn't change his spots kind of i mean but it's it's also hard to say because he was young and dumb and did a lot of ugh, it's just hard mm. and i know that's a lot of the reasons why people that are under what 16 or 17 don't serve like hard time because they are still young and learning and their brain is still developing but in my opinion uh when you commit domestic violence like that it's kind of hard to to look turn a blind eye to it and be like okay he said sorry he's he's not gonna do it again he didn't have a whole lot of time to kind of show that he wouldn't do it again though i mean to be fair i think according to this he was never convicted of that again so he didn't do well, it she again. dropped the charges and i wonder why i just wonder what made her drop the charges and then he turned around and pleaded not guilty yeah before she said no i'm not gonna do it yeah and then there was that other case where with the snapchat thing where he was being extorted by that woman's family that sucks that sucks so you feel for him in that regard in that regard like that's fucked up like i know people want to be famous people want to have the money and you know to be able to take care of their loved ones but at the same time like i was saying earlier it's like everybody wants to be your friend or people come out of the woodworks asking you for money and it's just like you don't know who you can trust kind of thing and even family it's some people have shitty family that come out and ask them for money like all the time and there's a lot of people have to cut family off and cut people they love off because people just want 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 everything you have and it's just like I, I, I can see how that will put people in a dark spot because it's like you feel like oh, you're alone. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you think about the uh, the murder itself? I you were kind of sad that it was it was just a robbery <laughs> gone wrong. I mean, I hope that it was just a robbery gone wrong. I mean, 
uh, I don't know. I don't know if I hope it was a robbery gone wrong. That just sucks if it, if it really was because, like we were saying, like he was really trying to to be a better dear, a person, be a better person, and then just to have it just all taken from you just because you didn't want to give up your your bag. Your Louis Vuitton bag with your stuff in it. Mm, really, you, you would know, just I say just like. I kind of find it hard to believe that this was some random. How did they know he would have a bag of stuff in there? Uh, they, were they were following him. Following him. Yeah. They were following him. Yeah. Uh, also, so if somebody was like, "Hey, give me your money," you would just be like, "Here, take my stuff." Yes, I would hand them my fucking purse. My life and my kids' lives mean more to me. Than my own life. Like, don't, don't fucking, you want, you want my car? I'll give you my keys. Take it all. Just leave me and my kids alone. What That's if the way you, I am. Okay. That's the way I see it. Yeah. But, uh, but if it was, young, yeah. Though, like, maybe 20 year old me, maybe 19 or 18 year old me might not have had that same mindset. But I'm older now. So. Yeah. But if it was me, you were like, uh, yeah, you can get him. <laughs> you can, you can take them. I'm just kidding. Okay. You will leave me high and dry. No. Leave us alone. Take, take our purses, our wallets, our cars. Take it off. Just yeah. leave us alone. I mean, I I don't carry cash. I just carry cards. I can just like cancel take it. Take them all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then get a new one. So yeah, I mean that's 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 the murder and life of of XXS Tentacion. So now do you kind of understand why probably Caden doesn't like him very much? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think that's I think it. I think for him it was probably him beating his um, baby mama. Mm. I think that might have done it for him. But then like we don't even know if she's very pregnant. Pregnant? I thought she had the baby. I don't know. Yeah, I mean she did. She, did she ever have a baby? I don't know. I thought she did. I don't know. I don't know. So, I really don't know. So yeah, there's that. Um, I want to get back to like the whole Michael Jackson thing because in the in the film festival that not the film festival the music festival that I was recording the other day had a Michael Jackson impersonator <laughs> perform. Now that was pretty fun because this guy he can he he could do the moves. I've seen um, a, uh, like a recording of a Michael Jackson impersonator. Mm-hmm. It does look fun. It looks like they just like bring life to the party. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he like yeah. I remember he was recording. He was he was he was performing, and there was this kid in the front, and he walked up to him, and he was like he just like touched his hair and did that, and then went on the show, and the kid started crying. Because <laughs> she he was so happy. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that was one of the thing. That was the one of the most memorable parts of of the music video of the music festival. And I have it recorded. I recorded his performance. Have you seen the documentaries on HBO? I have. Yeah, I have seen Escape Escaping Neverland. Oof. What is your opinion on that? I, I don't want a, a whole elaborate opinion. I just need like a little brief. I, I thought I thought we were uh, we agreed that we weren't going to do pedophilia on this show. Oh, give me your brief opinion. I try to try to keep that all of that out. Did you like it? Did you agree with it? Did you believe it? I that's think I Escaping know. Neverland was a well-made documentary. That's all I'll say. Okay, okay. I can agree with it that. It was a well-produced documentary. It, it put me in a place where, like, wow, like it made me start questioning a lot of things. Mm. I could tell you is, what I think about it off is off camera. The that, that I think that i thought i don't know like that's the way it left me like mm. that there's another one on on uh amazon prime or yeah i think it was on amazon prime called uh square run square one mm. if you want to check that out if you can stomach what, it is it the same story or something else it's it's the same story oh okay if you want to ch- different people or the same people i think it's the same people oh mm, i don't know if i want to watch that again i mean like that's that kind of stuff sticks with you you know like ugh. but anyway see i will talk about that in a little bit 
Okay. <laughs> like if you're like like if your heroes turn out to be not so great people. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody were to meet you and then they were like, oh, she's kind of she's kind of mean. <laughs> I am. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was the, uh, the the murder and times of Exorcist and Tacion. Uh, what do you think? Good guy, bad guy? Uh, good guy trying to be. I mean, bad guy trying to be good guy. Is that not bad good? Bad guy. Bad guy. Okay, once bad guy. Former bad guy? bad guy. Former bad guy. There we go. There we go. Former bad guy turned good guy too late. Uh, too late i don't, i wouldn't call that too late i mean I'd he was it too late i don't know it was pretty early but it, it was just cut off yeah. yeah and uh so yeah do you think if he was given enough time he would have amended for everything i honestly don't know hopefully hopefully that would have happened and prove me wrong dude i want you to prove me wrong man but he can't really do that because he's kind of not yeah, around he's anymore. Done. Yeah, he's done. He clocked out. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, that's that's everything. All right. We'll talk to you guys later in a fortnight. Two weeks. Two weeks. Dab. Bye. Dab. Bye. Thank you for listening to A Vision Podcast, home of Wacky Talkies, The Kingdom, Evil Exists, and many more.